tragedy is a branch of trauma that treats in a serious and dignified style the sorrowful or terrible events encountered or caused by a heroic individual by extension the term may be applied to other literary works such as the novel tragedy is a form of trauma based on human suffering that invokes an accompanying catharsis or pleasure in audiences while many cultures have developed forms that provoke this paradoxical response the term tragedy often refers to a specific tradition of trauma that has played a unique and important role historically in the self definition of western civilization although the word tragedy is often used loosely to describe any sort of disaster or misfortune it more precisely refers to a work of art that probes with high seriousness questions concerning the role of man in the universe the greeks of attica the ancient state whose chief city was athens first used the word in the 5th century bce to describe a specific kind of play which was presented at festivals in greece sponsored by the local governments these plays were attended by the entire community a small admission fee being provided by the state for those who could not afford it themselves the atmosphere surrounding the performances was more like that of a religious ceremony than entertainment there were altars to the gods with priests in attendance and the subjects of the tragedies were the misfortunes of the heroes of legend religious myth and history most of the material was derived from the works of homer and was common knowledge in the greek communities so powerful were the achievements of the three great greek dramatists aeschylus sophocles and euripides that the word they first used for their plays survived and came to describe a literary genre that in spite of many transformations and lapses has proved its viability through centuries historically tragedy is a high order sorry historically tragedy of a high order has been created in only four episodes and locales attica in greece in the 5th century bce england in the reigns of elizabeth i and james i from 1558 to 1625 17th century france and europe and america during the second half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century each period saw the development of a special orientation and emphasis a characteristic style of theater in the modern period roughly from the middle of the 19th century the idea of tragedy found embodiment in the collateral form of the novel development origins in greece the questions of how and why tragedy came into being and of the bearing of its origins on its development in subsequent ages and cultures have been investigated by historians philologists archaeologists and anthropologists with results that are suggestive but conjectural even the etymology of the word tragedy is far from established the most generally accepted source of the greek tra- tragedia or goat song from tragos meaning goat and adian means to sing the word could have referred either to the prize a goat that was awarded to the dramatists whose plays won the greatest competitions or to the dress that is goat skin of the performers or to the goat that was sacrificed in the rituals from which 
tragedy developed. In these communal celebrations, a choric dance may have been the first formal element and perhaps for centuries was the principal element. A speaker was later introduced into the ritual in all likelihood as an extension of the role of the priest and dialogue was established between him and the dancers who became the chorus in the Athenian drama. Aeschylus is usually regarded as the one who, realizing the dramatic possibilities of the dialogue, first added a second speaker and thus invented the form of tragedy. That so sophisticated a form could have been successfully developed by a single artist, however, is scarcely credible. Hundreds of early tragedies have been lost, including some by Aeschylus himself. Of some 90 plays attributed to him, only seven have survived. Four Dionysia or Bacchanalia, feasts of the Greek god Dionysus, was held annually in Athens. Since Dionysus once held place as the god of vegetation and the wine, and the goat was believed sacred to him. It has been conjectured that tragedy originated in fertility feasts to commemorate the harvest and the vintage and the associated ideas of the death and renewal of life. The purpose of such rituals is to exercise some influence over these vital forces. However, the original religious connections of tragedy may have been two elements have never entirely been lost. First, its high seriousness befitting manners in which survival is at issue and second, its involvement of the entire community in matters of ultimate and common concern. When either of these elements diminishes when the form is overmixed with satiric, comic or sentimental elements or when the theatre of concern succumbs to the theatre of entertainment, then tragedy falls from its high estate and is on its way to becoming something else. As the Greeks developed it, the tragic form, more than any other, raised questions about human existence. Why must humans suffer? Why must humans be forever torn between the seeming irreconcilable forces of good and evil, freedom and necessity, truth and deceit? Are the causes of suffering outside of oneself, in the blind chance, in the evil designs of others, in the malice of gods? Are its causes internal and does one bring suffering upon oneself through arrogance, infatuation, or the tendency to overreach? Why is justice so elusive? Aeschylus, the first great tragedian. All the materials of tragedy, all of its cruelty, loss and suffering, are present in Homer and the ancient myths, but are dealt with as absolutes, self-sufficient, and without the questioning spirit that was necessary to raise them to the level of tragedy. It remained for Aeschylus and his fellow tragedians first to treat these absolutes critically and creatively in sustained dramatic form. They were true explorers of the human spirit. In addition to their remarkable probing into the nature of existence, their achievements included a degree of psychological insight for which they are not generally cre given credit. The Athenian dramatists conveyed a vivid sense of the living reality of their character's experience, of what it felt like to be caught like Orestes in desperately conflicting loyalties or to be subjected like Prometheus to prolonged and unjust punishment. The mood of the audience, as it witnessed the acting out 
of these climactic experiences has been described as one of impassioned contemplation from their myths and epics and from their history in the 6th century the people of athens learned that they could extend an empire and lay the foundations of a great culture from their tragedies of the 5th century they learned who they were something of the possibilities and limitations of the spirit and of what it meant not merely what it felt like to be alive in a world both beautiful and terrible Aeschylus has been called the most theological of the Greek tragedians his prometheus has been compared to the book of job of the bible both in its structure and in its preoccupation with the problem of suffering at the hands of a seemingly unjust deity Aeschylus tended to resolve the dramatic problem into some degree of harmony but his harmonies are never complete in his plays evil is inescapable loss is irretrievable suffering is inevitable what the plays say positively is that one can learn through suffering the chorus in agamemnon the first play of the orestia says this twice the capacity to learn through suffering is a distinguishing characteristic of the tragic hero preeminently of the greek tragic hero he has not merely courage tenacity and endurance but also the ability to grow by means of these qualities into an understanding of himself of his fellows and of the conditions of existence suffering says aeschylus need not be embittered but can be source of knowledge the moral force of his plays and those of his fellow tragedians can hardly be exaggerated they were shaping agents in the greek notion of education it has been said that from homer the greeks learned how to be good greeks and from the tra- tragedies they learned an enlarged humanity if it cannot be proved that aeschylus invented tragedy it is clear that he at least set its tone and established a model that is still operative and in the 21st century the orestia is still considered one of the greatest spiritual works written sophocles the purest artist sophocles life spanned almost the whole of the 5th century he is said to have written his last play dipus at colonus at age 90 only seven of his plays of some 125 attributed to him survive he won the prize in the tragic competitions 20 times and never placed lower than second sophocles has been called the great mediating figure between aeschylus and euripides of the three it might be said that aeschylus tended to resolve tragic tensions into higher truth to look beyond or above tragedy that euripides irony and bitterness led him the other way to fix on the disintegration of the individual and that sophocles who is often called the purest artist of the three was truest to the actual state of human experience unlike the others sophocles seems never to insinuate himself into his characters or situations never to manipulate them into preconceived patterns he sets them free on a course seemingly of their own choosing he neither preaches nor rails if life is hard and often destructive the question sophocles asks is not how did this come to be or why did such a misfortune have to happen but rather given the circumstances 
how must one conduct oneself how should one act and what must one do his greatest play edipus the king may serve as a model of his total dramatic achievement embodied in it and suggested with extraordinary dramatic tact are all the basic questions of tragedy which are presented in such a way as almost to define the form itself it is not surprising that aristotle a century later analyzed it for his definition of tragedy in the poetics tragedy must maintain a balance between the higher optimisms of religion or philosophy or any other beliefs that tend to explain away the enigmas and afflictions of existence on the one hand and the pessimism that would reject the whole human experiment as valueless and futile on the other thus the opposite of tragedy is not comedy but the lit- literature of cynicism and despair and the opposite of the tragic exist- artist stands which is one of compassion and involvement is that of the detached and cynical ironist euripides the dark tragedian the tragedies of euripides test the sophoclean norm in this direction his plays present in grueling detail the wreck of human lives under the stresses that the gods often seem willfully to place upon them or if the gods are not willfully involved through jealousy or spite they sit idly by while an individual wrecks himself through passion or heedlessness no european hero approaches oedipus in stature the margin of freedom is narrower and the question of justice so central and absolute and ideal for aeschylus becomes a subject for irony in euripides the gods are destructive wrecking their capricious wills on the defenseless aristotle called euripides the most tragic of the three dramatists surely his depiction of the arena of human life is the grimmest many qualities however keep his tragedies from becoming literature of protest of cynicism or of despair he reveals profound psychological insight as in the delineation of such antipodal characters as jason and media or of the forces often subconscious at work in the group frenzy of the bacche his bacchic odes reveal remarkable lyric power and he has a deep sense of human values however external and self-conscious media even in the fury of her hatred for jason and her lust for revenge must steel herself to the murder of her children realizing the evil of what she is about to do in this realization euripides suggests a saving hope here is a great nature gone wrong but still a great nature later greek drama after euripides greek drama reveals little that is significant to the history of tragedy performances continued to be given in theaters throughout the mediterranean world but with the decline of athens as a city state the tradition of tragedy eroded as external affairs deteriorated the high idealism the exalted sense of human capacities depicted in tragedies at its height yielded more and more to the complaints of the skeptics the balance for tragedy was upset and the theater of aeschylus sophocles and euripides gave way to what seems to have been a theater of diatribe spectacle and entertainment